Okay, today's video is about what is academic culture and how can I participate in it. Academic culture started a long time ago at a place called an academy. On this slide we have an academy in America and on one side we have Plato and on the other we have Socrates. These are famous Greek thinkers who started in academies. What did they do at these academies, these ancient Greeks, from two and a half thousand years ago? Well, an academy was a place of learning, where younger scholars would visit older scholars and listen, and where older scholars would argue science. For them, science was something of a sacred or semi-religious pursuit, and they believed that by doing science, they were partaking in some way in the divine. This was particularly true in Athens, where their patron, or their goddess, was Athena, the goddess of wisdom, but also the goddess of war. And this gives you some idea of what their science was used for. However, Greek science had its limitations. Many Greek scientists would argue with each other. Usually one academy would argue with another academy about various interpretations, physical phenomena, or about esoteric and spiritual matters. They didn't have a very well um, developed notion of evidence and using experiment, although some Greek scholars did of course use this, and they had proofs of mathematics. In general, that came much later. And as a result, there were many arguments between the academies and within the academies, and progress was limited. However, some amazing progress was made, such as by Athanasius, who worked out um, to within a, a small margin of error the size of the earth. And he did this not by relying on tradition, but by experiment and extrapolation. He took measures of the angle of the sun at Syene and Alexandria, knowing that Syene, being due south, was close to the equator. By calculating the distance he had travelled and the difference of the angle, he was able to work out the uh, size of the Earth. However, he was not particularly well uh, received in his day and his work did not go on to inspire many others. There were many such scientists through the ages, such as, for example, Archimedes, who made very many famous experiments and made use of it, but no one else followed him in that way. And the Arab Ibn Sina, who worked out the first experiments in the area of medicine and how to trial drugs, for example. But once again, he was an isolated genius in his time. It wasn't until much later that experimentation became popular with the famous Galileo Galilei. What Galileo did was prove that many of the theories of the most famous Greek philosophers, such as Aristotle, were in fact incorrect, although he himself did not point the way to the new understanding. He did make experimentation very popular. One of his most famous experiments was to do with the speed of forming bodies and the existence of gravity, and he proved that in fact um, things fell at the same rate regardless of their weight, and this opened up a whole new field of inquiry because it showed that many of Aristotle's views from 2,000 years ago were in fact incorrect. Their experimentation became very popular, and within the universities this led to the use of evidence. Argument backed up by evidence. No longer simply a matter of argument, but argument with evidence. At this time also technology was advancing, so there was a new need to understand the world and a new need to push new frontiers. In 1492, Gal um, Columbus had sailed around the Earth, but unfortunately he had used um, the calculations of a different Greek philosopher than Aristides, and he miscalculated the size of the Earth. When he landed in America, he thought he had gone right around to India, and called the inhabitants there Indians. Evidence is now extensively used, um, certainly within the hard sciences. 
you must back up your theories with evidence. That's not to say there isn't an element of argument. In the social sciences, of course, evidence is used, much of that gathered by research and then presented as an argument. It is more interpretive, though. Also in the arts proper, um, we were expected to use evidence for our claims, but again, it's more interpretive still. Scholarship has changed since the long ago days of Plato and Aristotle, but there's still some common elements, such as the use of argument, and from the time of Galileo, the use also of evidence. But instead of scholarship being conceived as a semi-religious activity concerned with discovering the sacred truth, it now has many more prosaic uses and many more um, functional uses. And some of our institutions, such as TAFEs and business colleges, reflect this new focus. However, argument and truth is still important. And that is how theories change. For example, theories of Sir Isaac Newton, pictured here, supplanted those of Aristotle, after Galileo had shown them to be wrong. But his theories did not last forever. Although he relied on evidence and mathematical theories, they were supplanted by Albert Einstein, whose theories and evidence were closer to the truth. And now it's your turn to partake in academic culture. We may not have the brilliance of an Einstein or a Newton, but we can still make significant progress and have achieve in the academic area. To do this, we need to stay on track, to stay focused and to exercise our minds. The mind is like a muscle, okay? If you use it, it grows stronger. For this reason, it is important to study hard and study regularly. Only by employing our minds will we improve it, will we allow it to grow. However, it's not just a matter of working hard. We also need to work smart to choose the best use of our time in terms of uh, achieving academically. And in this, your counsellor or your academic can help you. If you partake in argument, you understand an argument, back that up with evidence, you will succeed if you work hard and you work smart. This will, of course, lead to graduation, which is a great moment of pride in your academic career. We wish you the best of luck here at UWS College, and we'll be reminding you about the existence of argument and the use of evidence and how you too can appreciate this and then join in as a fully-fledged scholar yourself. Best of luck.